Most of us are aware of what these suits are. Motion capture suits do exactly that, they capture motion. You may have been introduced to this kind of technology from behind the scenes of films like Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, or Planet of the Apes. We can all understand conceptually what it means to capture motion, but have you ever wondered how it actually gets translated? What does that set of data actually look like, and is that data usable right away? Hey, I'm Kevin, and I'll be showing you what it's like to work with mocap data, how it comes in raw from production, what issues usually happen, and what solutions we use to fix those errors. Firstly, let's talk about how our system works. There are different forms of motion capture technologies, from optical to inertia-based to video-based. Our system is the first, optical. The cameras in our space look for and track highly reflective points like our tracking markers. In order for us to capture human motion, we have to place the markers in a specific orientation on the talent so that the system recognizes it as a skeleton. We then highlight all the markers on the actor while they are in T-pose and designate a name. Then boom, we're ready to start capturing. After a capture session is done, this is what we're looking at. In this case, we had two actors speaking to each other in a scripted scene. You can see both marker sets that represent each actor here and can play back the performance at various speeds or at specific sections. A common misconception about this high fidelity mocap is that the performance is recorded and ready for use right away. In reality, you could do this, but there are almost always small hiccups in the data caused by occlusion or marker swapping. Let's look at this take for those issues and fix them. Occlusion is an issue that occurs when all cameras lose sight of a marker, a marker falls off, or the system can't distinguish one marker from the other. Here's an example. In this instance, the forearm marker of this actor is really close to the right waist marker. The system can't tell at this point in time that it's two markers next to each other, so it loses data from one of them. Alternatively, in this instance, we see a marker disappear altogether. This is because at this point in time, the actor covered their chest marker with their hand. In order to fix this problem, we need to approximate where this marker should be by using other marker points. Here, since we are replacing the waist marker, we can use the other hip markers to approximate this as they all move similarly. Next, marker swapping. This happens when a system believes two or more incorrectly labeled markers are in the correct position. This typically happens around the fingers or arms when there's overlapping movement. In order to fix this, there's a handy labeling tool in our software that allows us to tell the system what body part a marker should be representing. Once we go through the take and all issues are fixed, we can export our animation as an FBX to then bring into other softwares like Maya and Unreal. So to summarize, fixing motion capture data can be a lengthy process as each issue needs to be tackled individually and based on what kind of movement is happening. It's important to listen to your motion capture specialist when you're capturing so you can minimize issues and get your data faster. Hope this video gave you some more insight in how motion capture works and what goes on during the post process. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe and have a great day.